BC Outdoor Sport Fishing. Brought to you by your Toyota BC dealers, Rapala and Yamaha. Hello, welcome to BC Outdoor Sport Fishing. I'm your host, Mike Mitchell. Today we're at Hefley Lake, which is approximately half an hour outside of Kamloops. Uh, today we're fishing with one of our writers, authors, and uh, columnists at BC Outdoors, Phil Rowley. Phil, why don't you give us an idea what we're going to be doing today? Well, today, Mike, I'm going to show you the strategies and tactics I use when I'm approaching a new lake. I'm going to show you what I do before I get on the water and on the water, and just give you an idea of what to do the next time you go visit one of your favorite lakes or perhaps one you've never fished before. Sounds good. Why don't we go get some fish? Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Right on. So, Phil, I noticed you uh, were walking over here looking at the shore. What, what are we looking for here? Well, Mike, the important part before any trip is to have a, a look at your surroundings and, and turning over rocks and logs can reveal a lot. And if I roll over this log, I'm quite sure we'll find lots of things. And, and look here, we've got scuds, mayfly nymphs. So right away, we're looking at what's most abundant, what color it is, what size it is. Gives us clues as to what possible flies we can try. It's always a good idea, instead of guessing, to actually get some facts before you go on the water. Good idea. So Mike, was that a, a subtle take, uh, pull right under? Or I tell you, I was, I was just picking up to cast. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, if you're just picking up, that pitches that coronament up. And yeah, I think that's what it was. That's one of the techniques you do when fishing indicators is a short strip, yeah. and that'll pitch your coronament up and down again, and any trout in the neighborhood sees that action. They're, they're big eyes, they're sight feeders, they're gonna be drawn to that motion. Yeah, this is that, uh, that double header coronament from the book. Yeah. Who, uh, who, was Les Robinson. who was the originator? Les, Les Robinson. Where is he from? Um, Lumbee. Not, Lumbee. Not, Lumbee. 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 Okay. That's what I like about the action of this rod here with the, with the 10 foot, the bend you get. And it gives you good hook set. Beautiful. Um, you know, uh, and it's, it, it's nice for casting the indicators. And with there that soft tip, you can have that open loop that you need to avoid tangles often longer leaders when we're doing chronomid fishing even with indicators sometimes in deeper water so this one's it's a feisty little guy yeah but he's and he's that stereotypical chronomid hook take right in the top lip because they come up go down over it and then take it going down and away and you lift up and put it right in the roof yeah, of the and I've, I've noticed here you're wet you've wet your hands yep. before you should always do that the protective slime it's important you know in a catch and release world you need to Take care of the fish so we can come back and enjoy this again or let's show the camera a quick shot. Sure. Beauty Look fish. At that. Typical Beauty. rainbow trout from Kalamush area. Yeah, nice dark backs. Great camouflage. You wouldn't believe it's silver, it's great camouflage, but it is. It reflects light in those dark backs and off he goes. Full of energy. So right now we've uh, we were anchored up in about 14 feet of water here, and now we've pushed in. What what's the reasoning why we're why we're gone in? If we're fishing 10 feet, what's the difference? You know, as fly fishers, we're most effective in water 20 feet deep or less, and and that's because of we can use all the equipment at our disposal, different line types, different presentation tactics, like we're using strike indicators right now. Yeah. Um, also, with the shallows, you have sunlight penetration, and through photosynthesis, this stimulates weed growth. Weeds are, you know, it's basically the supermarket down there, so yeah. trout are in here foraging. We're, we're targeting feeding fish. Um, once we trigger where in the lake to find them and at what depth, uh, we should start to have some fun. And especially since the sun's coming back out again, we'll get things warmed up and hopefully get the hatch going. Okay, sounds good. Oh, yes! That's a beauty. Got the jump, got the jump. Look at this. This is why you still water fly fish. There's some slack in the line. This is why you still water fly fish. 
I'm going to clean up the decks here because this is a, this is the kind of thing when they're running around I get into trouble with. There he goes. So I'm letting him go. There he goes. <laughs> oh, listen to that. Oh. That's music to my ears. Yeah, hopefully it doesn't <laughs> music to the loon's ears. <laughs> they like that sound. It means dinner may be available. Oh, and we got fish, Mike. There's just fish everywhere. I've got yeah. another one cruising. Again, we've got cloud cover, so they're very secure coming into the shallows like this. We're in, how deep are we, Mike? We're in, We're in 10 feet of water. 10 feet of water, fishing eight feet down, and there's just fish cruising everywhere here, feeding on chronomid pupa. And this black and red ice cream cone, number 12, man, don't leave home without it. <laughs> That's a gorgeous fish. That is a gorgeous fish. That's why we come. There we go. It looks oh. like he's ready to meet the net. He wants oh, to. Not yet. Oh, he's under the boat. <laughs> Get the net out of the way. There we go. We'll just I'll I'll lead him in head go. first. And he's in. And he's yours. There we go. <laughs> oh, thank you, Mike. <laughs> there you go. Thank I'm going to let the net go, Phil. You, you got the net. That's the beauty of these wooden nets. They'll float yep. and you can concentrate on releasing the fish. And take that hook out. Jaw. You got it there? Oh my God, beautiful. Look, at, look at that. What a gorgeous fish he's gone. <laughs> Learning with the pros, brought to you by your Toyota BC dealers. I'd just like to take a moment to show you how to install one of my quick release indicators and give you a couple of tips to show how to use them. First of all, to install, slide the indicator on the leader where you'd like it to go, disengage the black peg, hold the back side of the indicator, so the leader cannot move and push the peg back towards the indicator, pinching the loop that you've formed between the indicator and the peg, about one inch is fine. When the fish strikes and you lift, the indicator disengages, allowing it to slide free. This enables you to use these indicators and use indicators when there's greater than say 12 or 13 feet between your indicator and fly. A couple of tips to aid use. If you're tangling up, consider putting the peg on the fly side of the indicator. That way when the lead indicator, rather when the leader unrolls, it rolls away from the peg, reducing the risk of tangles. By placing a swivel between the indicator and fly, if you have a break off and that peg slides down towards the open leader, the swivel acts as a stopper. So all you have to do is replace your fly and maybe a little piece of tippet, but your indicator system is still intact. So there you go. How to use a quick release indicator and a couple of tips to make life a little easier when you're indicator fishing. Stay tuned for more BC Outdoor Sport Fishing. Closed captioning brought to you by Linex. <laughs> oh, <a> jumper. <laughs> nice fish. That's a better jumper, one. Jumper, jumper, jumper. Beauty. And again, oh, this one's going out. Now he's mad. <laughs> it's okay. All right. He's going out over here. So as soon as he gets under control here, I want to manage this line because this line will get into trouble. But the first priority is the fish. So stay tight to the fish. And I'm going to hook my finger, I'm taking that See, I'm taking waistline under my pinky here. And if I can, although now he's sort of given up, now I'm just going to quickly gather some line because if he runs, and I'm worried because I've got all this fly line around my feet, there's all kinds of things on the bottom of the boat and things to hook on. And boy, this one's given up a, doesn't look like to be the biggest fish in the lake, but he's spirited to say he the least. He doesn't know that size doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. Is, eh? He's saying, he's got a small fish syndrome. Yeah. He says, I'm tough. I'm tough. I'll I'm show young. You tough. I'll show you. Kick your five weight all over the lake. Pop the indicator there. That's the beauty of these quick release indicators. It allows you to fish any depth, and the leader is just pinched in between the peg and the indicator with a loop. So you're striking, it's pulling, and it disengages, and, and now you can, um, no worries about the indicator interfering with you, your ability to land the fish. Let's, let's introduce him to the Moby net here again, eh, Phil? Yes. <laughs> a big black mesh. This one's he's not fresh. done. Yeah, this he's not very done. Fresh fish. That's a beautiful fish. Just healthy, there gorgeous go. fish. There, there you go. go. Gorgeous, gorgeous fish. So let's have a look here, Mike. And we'll get we'll do a throat pump on him and see if we can find out what's going on. So first step here. You can just see here, I'll just pull the fish up a little bit and then we'll put them back in the net because um, but your typical coronamid hook set. See that right there? Top dead center. Right in there, that's typical. You can see that black and red ice cream cone. So we'll get that out of harm's way. Barbless hooks. 
put them in the net, prepare the pump, lubricated it. I'm just going to hold the fish un upside down, depress the bulb slightly down the throat, vacuum forms. Oh, this fish has been eating. Oh, wow. Yeah, a lot of orange stuff, which tends to think maybe zooplankton. So, fish has obviously got lots of fight left in them. Let's introduce them here quickly to the camera and yep, say hi. It's a nice hello. Welcome to BC Outdoors, <laughs> sports fishing. Beautiful British Columbia, Kamloops. Beautiful place to wet a line. Fish a lake a day for as long as you stay, I think they say. Yeah. Excellent. And off he goes. No harm done to that fish at all, Phil. Great yeah. job. So let's see what he's been eating. So we put a little bit of water in this little white dish. Oh, now this guy's been eating a real. He's got some zooplankton, which is the little orange dots. He's got little water mites, a few coronamids. See how that one's still wiggling? So this fish is actively feeding, and this fish has been feeding pretty steady. These larger mats of orange goo, if it looks like, are the decomposed remnants of scuds. And it looks like he's even got a stick or something in there. So again, just proof proof positive that a trout is an opportunistic feeder. We've got Chaobrus in oh. here. This is a some Chaobrus larvae. So this is telling me by the zooplankton, which are light sensitive, Chaobrus, which are light sensitive. You can see them wiggling in the corner there, perhaps. I don't know if the camera picks them up. They're clear. They just look like two black spots. This is a fish that's been feeding in deeper water and it's just come out onto the shoal to feed. So uh, just, uh, again, just a, a valuable tool. Uh, throat pumps tell you a lot of different information. Depth, what they're feeding on, whether they're actively feeding. So Phil, before we, before we let go of that, what does that, what does that tell us? Are we, are we in the zone where what we're, aside the fact we've just hooked a fish, brought him to the boat, are we, in, are we fishing the right size chronomids, the right? We, our chronomids are a little bigger. This is about a size 14, but Sometimes, again, it's good to stand out in the crowd. I'm always a believer. If they ate that one, work it for a little bit. You know, if I pumped this out and they were all brown and I've got black, I'd be contemplating a change. But that black and red has been a consistent producer. If it isn't broke, we're not going to fix it. So we'll just dump all that back into the lake and go get some more. Excellent. Here's today's Tackle and Gear. Uh, fishing out here on Hefley Lake for the morning. Come into the shore here and uh, we're going to talk about what we've been using here, Phil. So why don't you give our viewers a rundown on the equipment we're using today. Certainly, Mike. I started with a, I've got a 10 foot 5 weight, 5, 6 weight rods are good. The long length is good for casting, uh, leverage to set the hook, working distance between your indicator and fly. I've got um, floating line obviously, indicator tip helps again, helps turn over. I've got a short butt section and a nine foot tapered leader. Again, this helps turn over longer setups between the indicator and fly. We're pretty thin diameter. Uh, I've got about 2x fluorocarbon to a swivel and the swivel uh, serves a number of purposes. Adds a little element of attraction, uh, some weight and with the quick release indicators we're using today, if the stopper slides free uh, or breaks off, uh, if I break off at the fly, I don't lose the stopper because it slides down and hits the swivel. And then below that, I've got uh, approximately two feet of uh, um, seven pound fluorocarbon to uh, a size 12 uh, black and red ice cream cone. Uh, it seems to be working well as any other color we've tried today. So that's what we're using. It's a pretty simple setup and it works very, very well as we've seen. Excellent, good. Yeah, it's a little bit better, Phil. I think you're right. Uh, it looked like it. Ah, he's a little scrapper. Yeah. He, he thinks he's bigger than he really is. He's a wannabe. Yeah, again, that was uh, just after a quick little two inch twist with the, with the fingers and that's when it went back down again. Yeah, they seem to like it with a little bit of movement. Like possible, that's just what makes you stand out. And yeah, the flash or just yeah. whatever, right? Yeah, yeah, and sometimes it's not always good to blend in with the eight million other ones down there. Yeah, <laughs> stand out in the crowd. We want to be eaten. I'm going to ask you to help me net this sure. one again, Phil, since you do such a great job of netting. <laughs> <laughs> just important. So many people lose fish right at the net, and that's, I, you know, the drop the rod tip, but the person assisting with the netting 
just has to stay there and let you steer the fish in head first. You don't want to be stabbing at it. You'll no, it's a great tip. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there you go, Mike. I'll Thank you, Phil. Let you do the honors. Okay, I'll just clean up this mess here. Oh, let's see where this guy got up. And I believe that in his haste. No. Okay, he might be. And again, we'll we'll do uh, Phil's trick here and just flip him upside down just to just to help us along here a bit. See where that fly is right there, actually. You know what? Get I'm out. Yeah, I think I can get it Sorry? out. Yeah, I think I can get it out. Oh, okay. Yeah. There, oh, you know what? He's just hooked in the top of the mouth there. Go barbless hook. And out. There's that little, little uh, chronomid there, and we'll bring him up here. Just let him get some oxygen again, and then we'll bring him up and introduce him to everybody, and then we'll let him go again. And go back and get a little bit bigger for next year. Beautiful fish. Oh, there we go. Look at the colors on him. There we go. Nice, beautiful fish. And we'll just let him go. He's good to go. No harm done on him. You know, there really is something to the still water fishing, isn't there? <laughs> it's addictive. <laughs> it is addictive. Yeah, it's addictive. Those are, you know, not, not huge fish by standards, but you know what? They're sure scrappy. Again, on those five weights, long, long rods, just make a big difference fighting the fish, and you never know how big they're going to be. Lots of fun. Good price. There we go. There we go, double header. <laughs> yeah, I knew it. <laughs> I just let mine go real quick here, Phil, and I'll give you a hand with yours. Be careful Seems with your rod tip there. A little bit bigger. down and. <laughs> this little guy. Go. There we go. That's a nicer fish. There's some of these. That's beauty. Yeah. Well, we're getting sunlight's warm in the water. There we go. Nice fish. You're good. I'm gonna yeah. keep fishing. Just uh, take the hook out of there. And, and the beauty of these wooden nets, you can lay the net right beside the water in the sorry it's in the water beside you deal with your fish this one's gurgling away he's quite well hooked i think scud pupa hooks short short shanked and uh you know they really hold well because of the short shank as well and they also allow you to use a little larger hooks than what's hatching because of their short shank length so a size 12 scud hook what fly do you have on there right now? That's the uh, black and good old black and red ice cream cone. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going imitative and you're... I'm just uh, stripping and ripping. Oh, man. There we go. <laughs> so nice little fish. Gorgeous silver sides. Just like that. And there he goes. Just swimming away. Down in the depths getting his bearings. Off he goes, a gorgeous fish. Stay tuned for more BC Outdoor Sport Fishing. Welcome back to BC Outdoor Sport Fishing. Okay, we got a bit of a change of weather coming in, so this barometer is probably going to pitch down in a minute, and it often gets the fish excited. Nobody quite knows why, but and these are some of the it's a, a comfort factor we have to think about when we're visiting a new lake or any lake. And this one's not the biggest trout in the world, but man, they sure are full of fight in this lake. Just beautiful, nickel bright. We've got perfect water temperature today. It's 55 degrees, right in their wheelhouse when they're most active. And, Gorgeous little fish. Ate the number 12 black and red ice cream cone. 
Thank you, Kelly Davison, <laughs> for contributing that to Coronamid fishers in British Columbia and really all over Western North America now. It's a great little fly. I'll just moisten my hands there. It's a small fish. I can just probably don't need the net. I can probably just gently support them and back the hook out. Show everybody at home. It's always nice to see small juvenile fish. It means we've got a good diverse age class in the lake. Lots for the years to come and off he goes. <laughs> Lots of fun. Yeah, this one looks like it's got a little color to it. This could be a spawner and rainbows in lakes can't spawn successfully. They need flowing water and fine gravel to lay their eggs on so they get all colored up and uh, it can be stress. It is stressful on them. There's a fair degree of mortality associated with uh, spawning. So they often build some of the lakes. You'll see um, man-made spawning channels uh, to try and get them reduced. And of course, the Freshwater Fisheries Society of BC has got that wonderful triploid program where they put in uh, sterile females and no growth towards their sex organs. After about year two, they start packing on the weight. And this is we're getting into some double-digit fish but you can see this fish is quite colored yeah it's uh we're brought up on silver trout but these have their own unique color so this one's males get quite you know big hook nose this looks like a female she's not nearly as dressed up for the ball as the males get all right so there get this out and show you at home which well, colors again that's a Small precocious male, a little bit of a hook nose here, the behind the jaw. Whoop! <laughs> Back in the net. We'll show you one more time, and then we'll let it get on its way. Obviously, it's got lots of energy left. See the coloration there? Quite a bit different from the silver bright fish we've been catching, and that's a, again all spawned up. And off she goes. Well, Mike, I don't know about you, but that's that's a lot of fun. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's a great day. That's what still water fishing's all about, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, <laughs> uh, we sure, every day, like we say, we come out, we get a chance to unite a fish. We sure have lots of fun, lots of laughs, and yeah. we seem to do well, too. We do. We're not, we're not bad at this no. sometimes. We have a lady luck shines on us I once so. in a while. Yeah, Once in a while. You know, I want to thank you again for coming thank out. Thank you, Mike. Thanks for having all me. All the way. It's you know, been fun. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, again, BC Outdoor Sport Fishing Television. If you'd like to learn more about this program, check out our website and uh, you can get out there and get all the information you need. Again, thank you for joining us. BC Outdoor Sport Fishing has been brought to you by your Toyota BC dealers, Rapala, Yamaha, Freshwater Fishery Society of BC, Harbourcraft, and Kingfisher Boats. Scotty, Lawrence, along with 